Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the One Drop Shower Ministry of Preparedness. My name is Mike Albert, and I will be your host, bringing you the most in Bible scriptures, prophecy, and current events. We are sponsored today by AmberTracks.com for your fuelless generators by solar power and waterproof Bibles. What a great mix. While you're off grid, you will be assured to be studying God's Word, which is when uh, we need it the most, when we are in desperate situations of um, insurmountable odds coming up against us. Just like we are now at times of persecution from principalities, being oppressed, you know, being um, separated from our fellow brothers and sisters by demonic forces. Um, but we all have one thing in common, is that Christ died for our sins and that there is a heaven to go to. We just have to make that choice. Do or don't. I'll make sure I'm not getting an echo here. This is uh, muted. And the other ch microphone is muted. Yes, good. Okay. All right, so we're going to get into um, heaven. What is it? Where is it? How do I get there? Um, big question. It's right from the beginning of uh, Genesis all the way to um, Revelation. So it's an important aspect probably the most important aspect of the Bible. This whole Bible is about, I tell people consistently when they're a parent or newborn, uh, it comes to a mother and a father, male and female, uh, at the hospital. The doctor hands you the child, hands you the birth certificate, and should hand you a Bible as well too. This is the owner's operator instruction manual on how to operate this baby yourself. And when he's old enough to bring him his own Bible to read and study. And meanwhile, having pictures, stories, best bedtime stories ever about Jesus growing up. Um, but be sure not to incorporate into that um, the pagan types of um, worship and understanding, such as uh, Christmas and Halloween and all these other things uh, that get mixed up into uh, these understandings of Scripture but we have to keep separate from society. Um, there was a great documentary, if you ever get the chance um, to uh, review it, it's called Shadow Empire, or The Shadow Empire. I forget the guy's name, Sean, Sean Boonstrap, I think it was, uh, that made it. I think he's with um, AV, I think it's called, audiovoice.com or something. Uh, but look it up, you'll find it the Shadow Empire, and it's about the Roman Empire of Constantine, and how he was seeking favor of the people, but his pagan ways weren't working, his Greek ways. So he decided to incorporate Christianity and allow it and embrace it just to win favor of the people. He could care less about the religion. Um, but the uh, documentary points out that are we still living in that shadow of that empire, of that ideology, to embrace Christianity just because it fits, just so we can get into heaven, just, you know, to get by. But that's not truly in the hearts. God wants us humbled and have that faith in our hearts, his laws written in our hearts and in our minds, showing the good works and deeds when he comes uh, in order to get into heaven. It's just not a tool to be used for a um, prideful purpose. You know, I don't want to die. I want to go into heaven. You know, I want to live forever, you know, because, you know, whatever. Fill in the blank. A, B, C, D. Uh, more the reason to try to convince your loved ones to get into heaven as well. It's a one-way ticket. Um, and it's forever. And it's beautiful. And it's going to be here on earth. We got God's uh, judgment, our salvation, a thousand years of understanding why things the way they are, judging angels and other people, loved ones didn't make it, did make it. What's that guy doing here? <laughs> you know, and um, living here on earth with God forever. Amen. All right, let's um, begin with a prayer. 
and then we'll get into some scripture and then current events. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. Please forgive me of my sins, Lord. I repent and confess of my sins to you, Lord, because they offend you, Lord. Please have mercy on my soul, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, and your son's sacrifice. Please baptize me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit and everyone listening to this broadcast. Please fill our cups of iniquity with your Holy Spirit, Lord, overflowing, Lord, so we may know other temptations or whispers being heard of Satan. We ask, Lord, to please uh, bless our viewers and their needs physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Please remove any pain they're, they're having right now, Lord, of uh, discomfort physically or emotional. And we ask this the same with their children, Lord, and their grandchildren and great-grandchildren, Lord. Please bless and baptize them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Please protect them from Satan's whispers and temptations. Help them to get good school grades, Lord, and to have a, a, a successful financial blessings of a lifetime, Lord, and to die in old age uh, filled with uh, many good memories. Please uh, lead them to your cross, Lord, and help them to lead others to your cross. Please bless their homes, their foods on their table, uh, their travels with mercy. Uh, their finances with a blessing, Lord. We claim your promise of a financial blessing, Lord, an abundance of financial blessing, Lord. We insist upon this here and now. Help us, Lord, to sustain um, those that are in need of spiritual growth uh, with your word. Let it be enough to feed them, Lord, uh, with your gospel, your everlasting gospel. Help us to proclaim your three angels' messages to all the world, Lord, in every tongue and every nation, so we may hasten if we could, the coming of your Son. Please bless our nation, Lord, in the midst of these uh, unraveling chaotic times here, Lord, from our view at least, Lord, that uh, things are getting out of control with the weather and the earthquakes and the wars and rumors of wars, the proxy wars, uh, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, agency against agency. Uh, we know these are principalities, Lord, of uh, that we fight against and not uh, of flesh. So we ask for your guidance and uh, knowledge and wisdom and understanding to see, Lord, to actually see with our own eyes and to hear and understand and spread that knowledge and wisdom, Lord, from your point of view, uh, that these are principalities, Lord, that we fight against and not one another that we should be having strife with, but yet to proclaim your gospel through these times. Help this ministry, Lord, to uh, lead people to a 100-year plan of off-grid survival, Lord, during these times, should the need arise when everything breaks down in society, Lord, uh, and there is no more water or electricity or food or distribution, and uh, neighbor rises against neighbor, and um, even within the old household, Lord, um, parents against siblings, siblings against parents, and that there is a persecution unbearable that we may be able to Find refuge in the wilderness, Lord. Ellen White tells us, your last good prophet, Lord, to uh, seek shelter in the wilderness, to leave the cities, to leave the Babylon, uh, those stones one on top of another for living, Lord, that we know that you do not like. Help us to spread out across this land, Lord, and help us to take our land back, Lord, the land that you have given us, uh, that the government seems so... Uh, uh, quick to uh, claim eminent domain or um, endangered species or preservation over, Lord. Help us to uh, get these lands back into the people's hands. And we help, help uh, Lord, to uh, seek your eye and your wrath and vengeance upon those, like the BLM, that uh, so are, are so quick to take away the land you have given us, Lord, and the animals and uh, all these um, other secret secrets that need to be shot up in the rooftops, Lord. Please, Lord, help us to build a wall around our country, Lord, to stop um, those coming into our country illegally uh, or, and or those that seek as well to do harm here as far as uh, drugs go and um, human trafficking or child molesting, Lord. Uh, please help us to put a stop to those coming into our country that seek to do that or that will be used eventually to, you, to do that, Lord. We ask that you please protect our military, Lord, our boys and girls, Bring them home, Lord. Help us to protect our own land and shores here uh, and not police the whole world, Lord. Shut down all the military bases, Lord, around the world and bring everybody here, Lord. Let everyone take care of themselves and uh, focus on you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that your Ten Commandments be 
proudly displayed everywhere in this world, Lord. The whole entire world needs to see your Ten Commandments. Let it be spread like, like a plague, Lord, sweeping across everywhere, just popping up out of nowhere, Lord. Let it be a, an entire global uh, phenomenon, Lord, that all of a sudden your Ten Commandments just keep popping up out of nowhere, Lord. And let it be divine intervention in this as well, Lord. Perhaps carved in the stones on uh, Stone Mountain, Lord, and across the president's forehead there, Lord. Let your Ten Commandments just mysteriously appear, Lord, in the skies, in the waters, Lord, in the, in the uh, airwaves, Lord, of uh, broadcasts, on billboards, in the airports, on the screens. And please shut down those broadcasting, Lord, um, false news, Lord false witnessing and testifying, such as CNN, Lord. Shut them down, Lord. Dismantle that company, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you please bless our uh, military, our um, first responders, uh, the police and the firefighters, Lord, uh, going towards danger as others are running to it or needing their help, Lord. Please bless the doctors, helping these people with wisdom and knowledge to heal them uh, through your um, Holy Spirit, Lord. We ask you to please help those people to rebuild their lives in the aftermath of catastrophes, such as in Puerto Rico <coughs> and um, Mexico and Iraq, Lord, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. Please help us to unite and to lift each other up and help the churches, Lord, to be a beacon of light towards those seeking uh, assistance, that they may know that you are a good God, a loving God, and worthy of your throne, and Satan is not. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. And we invite your Holy Spirit here, right here and now, to be in this broadcast. Amen. So, heaven. What is heaven? We hear about it in songs. We hear about it in psalms. We hear about it from almost the day we're uh, born to the day we die. Heaven, heaven, heaven. What is it? How do we get there? Um, let us begin with... Uh, the New King James Version of the Bible this is the Andrew Study Guide, and I use it because of the commentaries that it has and the cross-references that it gives on each page. Um, on the bottom, the commentary, and in the middle is the uh, cross-references, which is great to uh, enhance your studies and to better understand a little more layman terms. Um, so it's really not layman terms. Um, it doesn't give an explanation. How did I get upside down? What's wrong with this laptop? There's a laptop. Did I flip it? <laughs> there we go. Wow. How did that happen? Oh, boy. Now, this thing has been getting hacked a couple of times. So if it goes in reverse or mirror, they call the mirror image somehow, it um, mysteriously somehow has a little uh, NSA finger on it. You know what I mean? All right, so let's see what um, the Holy Spirit impresses upon us to uh, study here for heavens, and um, or heaven, it's a plural. I just went into the um, the index, asked the Holy Spirit to guide me into a subject, and lo and behold, here we are. So let's see, right from Genesis 1.8, uh, a little bit of the sentence they give you too as well. Uh, that says, called the firmament heaven. Uh, and then Deuteronomy 33.13, precious things of heaven. Let's start with those two and see how far we get with that in our understanding from our small puny minds that we have. What can we really get from this? But God knows um, our understandings are you know, minuscule compared to his. So he tries to get his prophets to articulate the message. What is it? All right, so Genesis 1, 8. Right in the beginning. Very beginning. And the title of this is The History of Creation. And for the commentaries, we have 6 through 8. So let's do that. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament 
and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And so it was. And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and morning were the second day. Now, if we had to make a scale model of this and create something that would separate waters, under the firmament as well, and we're above the firmament as well, we may not be correct. We might be, but we don't know for sure. So we have to, I guess, really just keep on picking this apart because to me that sounds like a dome. That sounds like a dome over waters. I mean, you have this water here, and you want to separate the waters from the water. So is there, is heaven between the oceans? Is there ocean outside the firmament? That's what it sounds like to me. Um... But let's let's I mean unless there's gonna we're gonna find out more that the heavens are amongst the stars. But who's to say that's not all ocean as well too? That's not all water. Are we just in a bubble? I love that animation. It was um, what the heck was the name of that? Uh, it was a com computer editing animation they used for special effects. Beyond. It was beyond something. Where it was just. Um, showing you the size scale of everything from an atom to a universe and they would show you like the um like people walking on the planet i think it was all like cartoon type of you know or computer generated and it's like say people walking on the street and then it would zoom out and then you would see you know um the sky point of view of you know the buildings the rooftops and then the city and then the state, and then the county, and it would keep zooming out and zooming out until you saw the planet, and then it would zoom out more um, in that blackness as you see the Earth getting smaller and smaller, and it would be an eye. Like we were the in the eye of a huge, another animated type of, uh, you know, entity there. Uh, and then he'd be playing, you know, marbles with the, with the, with the Earth's. Um, and then that would zoom out further and further, and that would be like, you know, under the fingernail of another being. Um, so it would just give a um, uh, reference, point of reference from who knows what perspective. And I always refer to that when it, you read stuff like this in Genesis here. Are we really getting it? Do we really understand what this is saying? But do it, does it really need that much attention to articulate it other than we need we know we need to get there so is it wise to be speculative to the point of exhaustion with no answers or to be a bit more objective towards the 100% meaning if it costs you conflict if it costs you um, mistrust you know um, God wants us to understand his word, absolutely. That's why he sent his prophets. Otherwise, he would have spoke to us in light. Who knows how he would have communicated to us. And we'd be sitting there with a jar of light saying, oh, God's trying to tell us something. No, he gave us the Bible. Uh, so let's see what the commentary says. <clears throat> and this is 6 through 8, Genesis 1. Day 2 marks the creation of the firmament. The Hebrew term marks an expanse which most likely is an indication of the atmosphere surrounding planet Earth and is called heaven, verse 8. So is it possible that God is then this close? Is heaven our atmosphere that we know that um, science tells us is right there, what it's made out of? We have to... Uh, 
be very discerning about that that message. We want to, you know, not misconvey it. We want to make sure we understand as much as we can, but at the same time, not overlook something as well. And grow in it. It might take, you know, a lifetime to understand this. It might take a day for some people. Or this is, this is how it is. This is what I believe. And it's, you know, written in stone in my mind. So, let's see what verse 9 says. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place. Sounds like the oceans. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. So we have land and water. And God called the dry land earth. Earth. God called the dry land earth. So it sounds like there was no water here first. But now first he said there was waters to be separated from the waters. Oh, I'm sorry, next sentence. See, there you go. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw it was good. Let the waters of the heavens be gathered together into one place. What's that? Under the heavens be gathered together. All right, let's move on. Draw, make a model, make a model. Deuteronomy 33.13, precious things of heaven. Deuteronomy 33.13. Numbers, Joshua, Deuteronomy, 33. And for the commentary, we have nothing, so let's see what we get out of this. And this is titled, Moses' Final Blessing on Israel. And Joseph... He said, I'm sorry, and of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord is his, hand, is his land with the precious things of heaven, with the dew and the deep lying beneath. Wow, that's pretty deep. And of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord is his land with the precious things of heaven, with the dew, D-E-W, and the deep lying beneath. Dew to me seems like dew, like the morning dew. His land, blessed as it is in, in heaven, it sounds like. Of Joseph, precious things of heaven of the land. So it almost seemingly as as it is in heaven, let it be done on earth, perhaps. And the deep lying beneath. Not sure. Can't get much out of that. Let's see the beginning here. Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death, and he said... All right, so Moses is giving Joseph a blessing here. Let's see, in verse 14, with the precious fruits of the sun, with the precious produce of the months, with the blessed, with the best things of the ancient mountains, with the precious things of the everlasting hills, with the precious things. All right, so these are all things that he's blessing 
Joseph with. So further explaining the land, the dew, and the deep line beneath, perhaps the roots of the trees, the fruits that they bear, perhaps literally and figuratively of people's fruits. He's blessing the, uh, the livestock, it looks like, the bull, the horns, ox, to the ends of the earth. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Right, so it's a comparison, it seems like, to the greatness of heaven, which awaits us, into our lands here, that we may put a blessing upon those that have not such things, and which basically is all of us. Uh, so we should look forward to receiving such a blessing as Moses did here, and to bless others in such manner. So let us follow that example, and um, I would say take heed of anything less than being blessed with the best, right? Amen. All right, got a little bit out of that. All right, let's do one more and get into some current events here. I see Psalms, but Psalms are always difficult for me. The uh, Lord looks down from heaven. Word is settled in heaven. Ecclesiastics, for God is in heaven. Let's try that. Ecclesiastics 5.2. to me. Before Isaiah. Solomon. Ecclesiastics 5. 2 I said, right? No? Ecclesiastics 5. 2. 2. Okay. And this is titled, Fear God, Keep Your Vows. And the commentary we have, two. Okay. Do not be rash with your mouth, and not let your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven, and you on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Mm. A hierarchy, it sounds like. God is above you, greater than. And I remember a tradition that um, from a, a young lady I knew once that we would have tea together, and sometimes we would have a um, I don't know what you call it, a toast towards something. And she'd always make it a point. I think, was, I think she was Korean. Uh, and she'd always make it a point to raise my glass higher than hers in this toast. And I never noticed it until she explained to me and told me one day. She's like, you know, whatever she said. But it, to me, I understood it as that she was, you know, the head of or above, you know, greater than, fill in the blanks. Um, so it was always you know, like a little joking thing whenever we do it. We try to raise each other's glass higher than the other, you know, having some tea. And perhaps this is the same message here, which I'm sure it is, that God is portraying here, that he is above us. We are below here on the earth, a hierarchy, if you will, such as we do understand here on earth. And most would uh, frown upon that, that are in a position that they wish they were higher of, such as from a, a boss that was not so kind. And there are plenty of those out there, right? Um, humbling lessons we could learn from that as well. Not only from God here on earth, uh, but from each other as well. We have that transition of going from boss to not boss. Boss again, and then to not boss. Um, how we can better relate to one another 
and not put ourselves up on a pedestal because we are not God. Let's hear the commentary says in verse 2. Rash with your mouth. <laughs> oh, I see. Meaning, rash meaning harsh. To make a promise without thinking. Okay. True. And I see that as we uh, gain wisdom and knowledge in this world. That your word means a lot. Do not take it in vain what you promise because others will hold you accountable to that word. I mean, if we don't have our word, what do we have? Anything above and beyond that is just, you know, icing on the cake. You know, Mike said he's going to do this. And you know what? His track record shows from the past that he was always doing that, what he, that which he said. Whether it be completing a task, um, being on time, a lot of things that people just, you know, um, say they're going to do without even realizing that they're making a promise. I, I hold that of very high value. And I've always, always emphasized being on time for things if I say I'm going to be on time or early. Um, so don't overlook that too easily. And God is literally saying here, um, he's calling it rash with your mouth. It doesn't sound too kind. Okay, your heart as an individual. All right, so if you say things from your mouth, it's with your heart that you're speaking these. So have it, let it have meaning. Uh, before God, in God's presence, while at worship. Um, okay, so there is a reference here then that what this context seems to be saying um, of your vows, which is the title of this, Fear God, Keep Your Vows. Um, as we draw near to him, let me just read the first section of this here. It says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God. Okay, so in this context here, this is within your place of worship. Church, synagogue. And draw near to here, rather than be, rather than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know that they do evil. So you are indeed then sacrificing that which is held precious, your words which come from your heart. And God sees this and he views this and he understands this to be, um, I guess, a sin in a sense, because are we not then lying? Do we not have to evaluate our own track record? Do we not have to continuously test ourselves as we test spirits? Do a checkup from the neck up? Why is it that people continuously lie to themselves and to others knowingly saying things? Is it for their own self Edification, pride. Um, you know, almost as if you want, I want to use the word predicting. They're predicting, you know, that this is going to be the outcome. Understand, circumstance, circumstances come about where they change. A person's ability to hold to that word that are out of their control. Um, and are apologetic sometimes. So that you know, I know, I'm sorry, but this happened. I meant to. I meant well in my word. It was in my heart to do these things, but I could not control. You know, there was an accident. You know, the train derailed. You know, something or whatever. 
My dog ate the homework. Let's see. Commentary. God is in heaven. He is the great transcendent master. You on earth, small, a mere creature. His subject, words but few, promise cautiously. Here we go. Speak less listen more. Think before you speak, before you make that promise, before you make that commitment. Why vows in church, perhaps that's what they're talking about. Keep your vows. Are they talking about getting married? I don't think so. I don't see anything here about that, but those are vows before God. Are we not making vows before God if we are in God's house of, of committing to uh, to do something or to one another or to God himself? You know, God, I promise this, this, and that. Or should we just be more humble and speak less and just ask God for his help in these matters? To pray fervently to God in heaven. So, if God is in heaven, he is above us, we are mere, what do you call us, creatures? Mere creatures. Subject to him, then heaven should be a goal for us to seek to be in. Should it not? We will still be his creatures and subject, but not so quick to speak that which we do not know. And that's a lot right now. So he wants us to speak less since we know not all the things he knows in heaven. But as we get closer to him here on earth, that heaven becomes more and more understanding so that we may be so that we may more mirror the character and likeness of his son Jesus and get into heaven. So we, we we should strive to obtain this which is held to a higher standard than us, the Creator. To strive to be more like that. Um, and I guess that's how we should be examples to of others as well. Should we not? And it's sad when you see horrible bosses. Because that's sort of, you know, for those that do not know any better, that may get led to Christ led to God that reflects upon that I would assume and think wow look at this hierarchy I have my boss his boss has a boss etc going all the way up to state you know county laws and rules and regulations to federal laws rules and regulations and those that don't get held accountable to those which is absurd to me um, to, you know, kings and princes and presidents and queens. And there's that hierarchy. But look how things get broken down. If that is a reflection in their mind of heaven, they wouldn't want to be a part of it. Wow, look at this corruption. Look at this evil wickedness. Look at this attitude and the manner of this person, how they speak down to me or to others. So that is a reflection not of heaven, but of Satan running this world. Everything God does good, Satan does evil, reflects that mirror of. Separation. God wants unity. We can get to heaven. Satan wants chaos, disorder, 
disinformation, misdirection, misinformation to keep us from heaven. I made a point, and I didn't get disconnected. Amen. <laughs> All right, current events. We got a little bit of that. I might continue that tomorrow. We'll see. If I remember, let me have a little cup of tea here. Make that uh, screen a little bigger. Wow, the outside of that got cold quick. Gotta find the ultimate thermos, the ultimate can. Don't like this one. Best one I had yet, but still don't like it. Still not good enough yet. Let me make the window bigger. Say goodbye to me. We are legible. All right. More updates in the volcano eruption in Indonesia. Oof. Last update I remember is 100,000 people were evacuated and 60,000 people stranded there on vacation. Let's see what the update says. The mouse will cooperate. Almost good. I forgot the tea. I put the sh uh, chaga. If you guys are, um, are into chaga, great stuff to get. It keeps um, you able to stretch it out. You know, like you use one tea bag and use it once, sometimes twice, if you can get it. If you're lucky, if you just steep it a little bit the first time. Um, but this chaga, you get it's like a powder form. You put it in a tea bag. You have to get your own tea bags. Um, you make it, you make your cup, you fill it up, but you leave the, t the chaga tea in the pot or your bag, at your coffee or tea, and you add more water, and it brews again, as if it's brand new. Um, that's how you like chaga. I eat like five, I'm up to like five cups of tea so far on this one tablespoon of chaga. Um, it keeps, keeps getting darker, but if it doesn't get dark, you know, move on, get another batch. All right, I'm not going to read all this, but let's see what it says. Uh, Bally's airport will remain closed until next, until at least Wednesday morning, local time, which is today. And this update was from yesterday, the 20, today, the 29th. Uh, the volcanic ash advisory shows that the plane routes have been covered by volcanic ash. How thick. This is dangerous for flights. Indonesia Air Nav official, um, said and he warned the first major eruption of the mountain. A gung on the tourist island of Bali is eminent, with authorities closing the airport and ordering 100,000 residents living near the volcano to evacuate the area immediately. But thousands haven't left, despite the authorities raising the alert to its highest level, and forcible eviction may be enforced. A spokesman for the country's National Disaster Management Agency, there are personal. I'm sorry. There, there are personal doing the sweeping, or personnel doing the sweeping, uh, if they, meaning residents, need to be forcibly evacuated. Uh, the airport was originally closed for 24 hours from Monday morning, disrupting 445 flights and stranding about 59,000 passengers after Mount Agung sent volcanic ash high in the sky. All right, so it doesn't sound like it exploded again yet. There are, just give us a little update here. Television footage showed hundreds of holidaymakers camped inside the airport terminal, some sleeping on their bags. We've seen this at uh, New York here quite a few times. Um, all right, so forcibly removed. If people don't want to leave, how can you force them to leave? I don't get it. What, what, what is the rational thinking behind that? You think it's going to explode. I don't. Who are you to forcibly remove me from my home on a thought, on a prediction? And if it doesn't happen and you forcibly remove me, I should be able to sue you then. Didn't happen. What is your right? Who gives you that authority to forcibly remove someone? How is that law? So you have law over, I'm paying my bills. I'm complying to everything. And now you have this other law that even though you're complying, we're still going to take you out forcibly because we believe science says 
It's almost like a, uh, what's next then? Is this Stalin, Hitler type of Gestapo? You know, is this going to be used as an uh, example for those practicing a religion? Think about it. Did you know that um, in Canada, a parent will be forcibly removed from their house and put in jail if they obstruct their child from declaring and wanting to be the gender they choose to be. So if a 10-year-old boy says, Mom, Dad, I'm a girl. I'm going to dress like a girl. I want to be a girl. And, and nothing you can do about it. Because the government now says that you are not allowed to interfere with my choice of gender choice. Oh, no, you're not, Johnny. You're a boy. You're going to dress like a boy. I'm going to buy your boy's clothes. You're going to act like a boy. You're not going to wear makeup. And this is how it is. And you're going to find a girl and marry a girl opposite sex. If you 311, they call it. I think it's R911, they call it. You know, mom's obstructing me from being a girl. Uh, and I want to be a girl. I was born a boy, but I want to be a girl. Oh, really? Wait, that can't have that. Police come. Witness. Testify. Take mom to jail. We forcibly remove because of a belief of someone else. Scary, right? What the heck? Uh, you hear it throughout history of people practicing religions and going to jail for it. Being forcibly removed. Ginger, that's what I'm tasting. Put uh, some fresh organic ginger in there. Yesterday. All right, pray for these folks here that this gets um, organized and settled today. As of the uh, 29th of November, 2018, a couple days, a couple weeks away. All right, two hours ago, flash flood in Indonesia. Oh, boy, these people, let me tell you, they are constantly getting the worst of the worst of weather in this world. Malaysia epidemic hazard level zero. Three hours ago, vehicle accident in Spain, forest fire in Australia, vehicle accident, other. What is that? Never heard of that. Um, is that a boat then? Maybe on the water? Vietnam, South China Sea, level zero. Oh, is this that ship, that ghost ship? They found eight skeletons. A United Boeing, no. 787-900 registration uh, performing flight Singapore in route China Sea East uh, aircraft the aircraft encountered moderate to severe turbulence causing injuries to a flight attendant right. wait from the say it crashed into a UFO unidentified object all right turbulence okay uh, but no, that other thing that I was telling you about, a ship mysteriously appeared on the shores of Japan, and they tracked it back to North Korea for its, its birth, uh, B-E-R-T-H, where it original port from, or owners from, and no one was aboard other than those that have died, eight passengers, and they've been at sea for so long, their remains turn to skeletons. How scary is that? Um, coincidentally, on the same day, North Korea launched a intercontinental uh, ballistic missile capable of reaching anywhere in the world. So we have a problem, big problem there, folks, going on right now with North Korea uh, capable of doing this. So we have to uh, be on our toes, be prepared. I keep telling people now, for, for I don't know how long I've been doing this broadcast, for a couple of years, uh, how important it is to have a plan to be off-grid, a mindset to get into the wilderness. Look at this map, folks. Look at this. And this is just what you see manifesting physically. There are so many other things that are in the plans, in the works, 
uh, that you don't see and the mindsets of evildoers, you know, that give 20 reasons why every single day to get ready to be in the wilderness, to get away from where you live now around people, especially if you're in a city or close to a city or a densely populated area. And I say densely populated, I mean, you know, where you have more housing than than land. So compare, if you know what it's like upstate New York, you have more land ratio comparison to land developed for housing. And also with, as well, those uh, multi-stories. So it doesn't count if you have, you know, five-story buildings everywhere, 20-story buildings everywhere, uh, and just as much land, but you have the dense, density of the population that are going to come out of those buildings foraging off the land. So you don't have enough land-people ratio to get resources of food, water, plants, you know, medicinal herbs, um, shelter, etc., there's nothing guaranteeing your shelter to be structurally sound in the event of A, B, C, D. You know, could be a virus, could plague, could be a, an earthquake, a tsunami, a flood, uh, a CME, other hostile individuals as well you want to get away from. Um, you got to have a plan, folks. You got to at least have a plan. Get some. There was a guy that did a video the other day. Um, that said he was on a budget. He said, if you had $30 to spend to prep, how would you spend it? Well, first of all, I told him to prep, the most important thing is having a Bible and being with God. Second would be knowledge. Gain as much knowledge and wisdom as you can about prepping, about how to. And if you can, practice those things. And third would be books. Books, pamphlets, if you can, laminated. Just to uh, be able to identify plants, mushrooms, medicinal herbs. Oh, and I did add with the books, seeds. So, tangible things, too tangible, too non-tangible. God and knowledge books and seeds and you can get that for less than thirty dollars you can definitely get like a sample seeds i would go with first of all the seeds that grow the fastest the fastest growing crops such as beans such as um cabbage spinach um kale things that have a short growth cycle harvesting cycle i'm talking anywhere from two weeks to 30 to 45 days done you're harvesting but you have to stagger that growth cycle to gain as much as possible over the growing season so if you have a item that grows in two weeks you want to stretch it out as much as possible you want to plant that stuff you have to know your seedlings you know are you doing um are you putting seeds on a wet cloth you know some of these things, if these things grow in two weeks, talking a couple inches a day. You want a great video of a guy who had his carrots in beach sand in his root cellar. And he picks one out. Um, and he said, this has been here five years. He eats it. He brushes it off and eats it. It's like, it's like this is fine. There's nothing wrong with this. And then they just did the same thing with a, uh, something in a can a canning that he did. It was like 20 years old. I think it was jelly or something, or, or uh, some sort of jam. Opens it up, the lid pops, sticks his finger in there. He's like, this is good. Nothing wrong with this. 20 years old. So you need to stagger your growth of your plants, of your seeds, and try to get, of course, heirloom seeds, GMO, non-GMO seeds, I mean, organic if you can, but also 
make sure you get the seeds from those plants that produce seeds as well. So it's the 100-year plan, folks. It's not the three-day plan or the three-season or three-year plan. It's the 100-year plan. What are you doing to preserve for the next 100 years? All right, moving on. Looks like we got disconnected here. Are we reconnected yet? Yes, no. Vehicle accident. Other, all right. Vehicle accident, USA, New York City. Really? Oh, gee, how weird. Explosion in Israel, Tel Aviv. What happened in Israel? Israel police say an explosion in the port city of Jaffa killed three people and led to the collapse of a building. Police spokesman said, Mickey Rosenfeld said today, an investigation is underway to discover the cause of the large explosion. He says an emergency team discovered three people dead under the rubble. All right, so looking into that. Let's pray for them, folks. Always pray for Israel, folks. The apple of God's eye. Disconnected? No? Connected? Okay. All right, USA heat wave. What? South Dakota has a heat wave? It's the middle of winter. What the heck? It's warm here today, too, in uh, Long Island. Uh, let me see my temperature. I think I remember 60 before. Yeah, it's going to be 60 degrees today. It's December. 60 degrees? Seriously? It's 52 right now. It's supposed to be going up to 59. So if it's going to be... You leave your car closed, windows open, you're going to get in it. It's going to be like 75, 80 degrees in a car today. Things are getting strange. All right, heat wave in North Dakota, where the pipeline just burst. Uh, it was a good day to get yard work finished to decorate the house with holiday gifts. A record high of 72 degrees, unusually warm for the end of November. Wow. Um, what was the record? Is there a record here they're saying? Um, temperature for... Previous record high temperature for November 27th was in 1998, which was 67. So this broke that record for that day. All right, moving on. Uh, critical infrastructure, Uf USA, state of Carolina, North Carolina. So that must be a, let's see, a power outage. The town of Cary closed its facilities. The town of Cary closed its facilities Tuesday amid a power outage that peaked more than 12,000 customers. At 10 a.m., outages spread from Harrison Avenue and Reedy Creek split down to Cary Parkway. Cary tweeted asking for customers to report outages to Duke Energy. How can they report if there's no power? There's no cell phone. Towers. I guess well, if they have emergency generator backups. Uh, the town closed its facilities, including Cary Town Hall, due to the outage, but the town said the citizens can still conduct business online with Cary by 11.40 a.m. Less than 100 customers were still without power. The cause of the outage, outage wasn't immediately available. Somebody probably spilled their coffee on one of the boards. Speaking of outages, are we connected? Yes, no? All right. Moving on. We have critical infrastructure landslide, Indonesia, 22 hours ago. Did we do this? I'm not sure. Uh, we're on the same page here. And I think we're getting into yesterday, which I did all these. Okay. Any updates from yesterday? I don't see any. And the sun just came out now, too, so got reflections here. 
Okay, uh, let's see. Long-term events. Flood update. Logical update. Dominica. Yemen. Epidemic. Let's see that. Speaking of which, where is Yemen? 12 and 29. Same. Okay. And two updates. What is that? 819 days ago? Biological hazard USA, state of Illinois, and three, six, almost three years ago, two updates. September 5th, 2015. So is there an update that just happened? I haven't seen that. No. I don't know how this came about. While an outbreak of such an illness in a prison would nest wouldn't necessarily, um, yeah, let's see. Now this, they're saying this. Uh, they have found they have been found in creeks and ponds, water taps, primarily hot water taps, hot water tanks, cooling towers, and evaporative condensers, whirlpools, spas, and decorative fountains. All right. So it's all over the place, in other words. And I would continuously, you know, keep your immune system high to not fall victim of this. And keep on hand always um, colloidal silver. You can make your own colloidal silver as well. Get the silver rods on eBay. And um, three 9-volt batteries. Go on. Uh, so it was four hours ago at Guam, 4.6 in Chile, twice, five hours ago, 4.4 in Japan, five, six hours ago, Mexico, 4.5, seven hours ago, 5.7, twice in Peru, eight hours ago, 4.2 in Russia, nine hours ago, 4.2 in Mexico, 10 hours ago, 5.0 twice in Atlantic Ocean South, St. Helena, which is in the middle of the ocean there, between Brazil and South Africa, 11 hours ago. And I think that was, that was shaken there too yesterday as well. St. Helena rings a bell. Uh, and 4.4 in Ecuador 12 hours ago. All right, no tsunamis reported from yesterday, 5.1 in Alaska. Valdez, volcano activity, nothing here on this report that's new other than uh, that one we just talked about. No active tropical storms. Super volcano monitoring for the past 24 hours of the 28th and 29th. We got one, two, three, four, five. That's it. Same as yesterday. Squeaky breaks. We got five. That's it. That's good. It's average. It's good to keep it average. Otherwise, pressure builds up. But definitely, we're definitely going to get hit with something today once this uh, glancing blow hits us from the sun's CME. All right, let's go to my YouTube channel and onto the channel that I subscribe to to see what's quaking and shaking in their boots there. Time is at 10.10, doing good on the time. And that's it. Wrap it up. I think I should do two videos. One just for Bible and one just for current events. What do you think? Let me know your feedback. These videos are getting too long. It does, Bachelor. Gotta watch that guy. If you guys haven't watched Doug Bachelor yet, you're missing out on some great, great scriptures presented to you by a very humble well-spoken man it's been through a lot and he puts it down in such layman terms too really really easy to understand all right paul begley uh breaking iran sending warships to gulf of mexico um yeah he wants to go uh, be friends with his venezuelan buddies there that's all off grid nation rural internet options uh the good bad and the ugly 
you know, just a note on this with this with Iran. You know, first of all, I was surprised to hear that North Korea has a, a really, I think, a bigger navy than we do. I was very surprised to hear that. Um, not saying that they would defeat us by no means at all. But Iran, them being in the Gulf of Mexico, you know, it's obviously off the coast there, uh, Mexico, South uh, South America. If we wanted to, we would board them. We would surround them, you know, and just simply say, you know, listen, we're coming on board to see, you know, see what you got. And if they said boo, that would be bad news for them. All right, the comment, oh, we missed one. Off-grid nation, rural internet options, the good, bad, the ugly. Yeah, you got, you got satellites, maybe um, satellite phone. I think uh, Cisco has some good options for that. You know, it's pretty much going to be slow, whatever it is, put it that way. All right, the common sense show. Bitcoin smashes the $10,000 barrier in South Korean exchange. 10,000, right? One, two, three. Okay, yeah. Um, folks, don't fall for this Bitcoin stuff. I don't know if it's, you know, just being debunked or, you know, being uh, placated because there's reports going around about artificial intelligence is the one that created Bitcoin so they could go through your computer that goes to your bank to control the banking system. You know, hook, line, sinker, we fell for it. Now there's going to be what's called a singularity. Look it up. Do your research. Uh, I don't want to say something that might already be wrong. Um, but that might be misinformation. And my thought is, too, is Bitcoin is all just electronic digital currency. It's nothing tangible. So if the lights go out, you know, <laughs> what are you left with? You know, what can you do with a computer that doesn't have a battery or a power going to it? Nothing. All right. Potentially hazardous three-mile-wide asteroid will fly by the Earth before Christmas. Nemesis maturity. Uh, White House President Advisory Council on doing business in Africa. Long overdue. Uh, WSO, Bruce sees all gets new telescope, plus moon waves and pre-flood space travel. Huh? Pre-flood space travel? What? Interesting. Dr. Josh Axe, how to smell good, naturally best essential oils for odor? Hmm? How to smell good naturally? Oh, how to smell good now. Sorry, so your body odor, I think it's all about. So they're using essential oils for your body to smell good. Sound like they're talking about smelling the food. <laughs> White House, Vice President, uh, commemorates the creation of the Jewish state. Corporate report, we need to stop normalizing this. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I mean, it's just, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. If it does, it just... Humans are more stupid than I thought. <laughs> They're given citizenship to a computer uh, and some other sort of rights. You know, it's just ridiculous. You know, like my laptop has a is a citizen now. I mean, it's bad enough with the um, with the homosexuality, with their having rights. Um, then, then the, what is coming out of that? Do your own research. I've seen reports on this. The pedophiles now. There's like a group of like 12,000 of them, I think, somewhere. I think maybe Amsterdam, who knows. That are claiming that they are a group of pedophilers and have rights. But if you remember your history well, um, I, I remember this growing up. Talks of this thing called NAMBLA, I think it was. North American Boy Lovers Association or something like that. I'm sure they're still around. But even deeper down the rabbit hole of, of disgustingness and and and, uh, and uh, sinful is bestiality. All right. There's the, there's the next group rising up. You know, we want to, you know, marry the sheep. You know, we're sheep lovers. Um, we're going to marry them and we want our rights. 
where does it end, folks? Where does the madness end? Does it? Who knows? All right. Um, hold on a second. Here, gonna get it. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Lone Star, 1776, Proverbs 2, 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Christ's forgiveness, watchful and worshipful Wednesday with Pastor David Lynn. Dr. Eric Berg, D.C., can I eat pomegranates on a ketogenic diet. Team Jesus Preacher. Parade preach for the people. Amen. Voice America. Indictments. We finally hit it. We finally did it. Hillary Clinton in deep uh, poop. We'll see. Put our handcuffs. Put them up. Uh, Gitmo. Here you come. Black Scout Survival. Urban Bug Out Part 3. April Waters. Good Americans with Sean Stone, Bill Binney, Diane Rourke, Ray McGovern. April Waters. Sounds like a good show. All right. Uh, set reminder coming up. 1230. President Trump gives remarks on tax reform. Dr. Eric Berg, D.C. Oh, yeah. If you don't know, Nancy Pelosi and... and uh, Chuck Schumer didn't show up to the uh, mandatory meeting for tax reform yesterday and uh, military reform. Didn't show up. Spit in the face of the president. Got better things to do, I guess. But coincidentally, how is it... I find it very uh, strange that at the same time, I think it was like hours before, North Korea launched that missile. So are they getting inside information that North Korea was going to do this and didn't show up because who knows what may have been targeting the USA. All right. Home Veda, Home Veda, Home Remedies, best food to treat hives, easy recipe, vegetables, stir fry, full spectrum survival, Iron Dome, North Korea Missile Response, Soil Repair, Fracking Dangers, Soil Repair, I don't remember that, did I, uh, I thought I watched that too this morning, well, half awake. Alright, where am I? Uh, Eva Fox, couple of home remedies there. My appeal, Lone Star 7076, my appeal to the community guideline strikes. Oh, yeah. YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, whatever. You know, you can't really complain because it's free. You're not paying for this. It's not like you can do a recall on, like, a car that's defective. It's, it's a free software. You know, you're a guest. All right, New Earth. Uh, explore the rock-cut ruins and maybe even Megalis of Bulgaria expedition in April 2018. Voice America, breaking. Mandalay Bay shooter was an undercover FBI agent. See proof. Uh, let's see. U.S. NER doc. Echo Link QSO with... I guess that sounds like a radio thing. Ah, breaking news. Right side broadcasting. Tampa serial killer in custody. Very good. I gotta, I gotta make this mouse less sensitive or something. Dutch Sense. Ten hours ago, did a uh, West Pacific earthquake uh, report. Multiple volcanoes erupting at once. Be prepared internationally. He's saying be prepared, folks. You better take that seriously. Uh, Paul Begley had a show last night, Breaking South Asia, Armageddon, America on alert, North Korea fires missile. Christ forgiveness, CFM, Houston Bible study.
Uh, the Jackson Therapy. Okay, Wild Bill for America. Ripping up the race card. Praise God for that. Matrix Wisdom. Uh, Eric Don Dan Danikin on... Uh, let's see, History of Aliens, Ancient Times. All right, let's check them out. I like that guy. Paul Begley, South Asia, Armageddon, America on high alert. Oh, this is his, uh, he had a problem broadcasting last night. It, cu it got cut off half, half hour into it. Brilliant Minds, Peter Cho, L.A. Marzulli, and Stan Dio on the Hagman Report. That was uh, last night's three-hour show they did. Check that out. There he is, Doug Batchelor. Amazing Facts Television. Oh, it's live now. You should have a dial-in number. BP Earth Watch. Have Trump's Marines in raided, taken over the CIA. Counter coup at Langley. Pastor Daryl Matt, 1963. So many Bible prophecies center around Israel. Look at what is happening in that regard. That uh, should be good. Nothing fancy. Can't hate the Taurus 709. Slim. Nothing fancy. Why are you wearing gloves? Uh. Matrix Wisdom. Stephen Greer, the documentary that ends free energy secrecy. Yes, this is awesome. Very awesome. Um... I scanned through this, but I was able to pick up enough information where he is doing a project, I think any day now, uh, to launch um, at a concert, not only a documentary announcement about a, a movie about UFOs and explore, exposing them to uh, uncover all the deep secrets, but also to tell the governments, we don't need you. We don't need you and your secrets and your covers because we have it all ourselves. And this is what we know so far. This is what we're telling the people in the public what's happening. But he's also incorporating into this um, debut uh, at a large venue that's going to be seen by hundreds of millions, if not over a billion people, he's saying, an open source for free energy. They're going to have right there on stage at this concert to be announced so it's not spoiled, a operational device that anyone can build or buy to have free energy, not tied into the grid. They're still looking for people to get involved. Um, they have plenty of money. Um, and, God, you know, open some doorways, folks. If you got, you got an idea on a piece of paper somewhere in a drawer, pull it out and get in touch with them. Um, so I, I called. I, I left them a message. And uh, haven't heard it was yesterday. We'll see if someone gets back to me today. Got some ideas. On prime preparedness. Pope Francis accused of heresy and extras. <laughs> Dabu 77. Vanguard warns. Vanguard warns U.S. stock market has 70% chance of crashing. Um, I mean, Vanguard is a type of investment. April or June, Mandalay Bay shooter was undercover FBI gun running for Saudis and ISIS. Oh, here's the uh, ghost ship. Eight dead bodies land in Japan from North Korea. Oh, boy. Lone Star, 1776. Russell Landers, letters to Sister Batu. Christ forgive this. Midweek Bible study and worship with David Lynn. Paul Bagley, breaking. President Trump will handle it on North Korea. Double seven seven. Gold jumps. Nasdaq dumps in the red. Confusion or deception? Report shows thousands more troops abroad than military claims. Double seven seven seven. Russell Landers letter to Teresa. 1776, Lone Star, Dabu 777. It can reach D.C. Latest test can reach the U.S. continental hit yeah, by North Korea. Zeltic Flat Earth champions. The sun goes around the North Pole on a flat Earth map. Matrix Wisdom. Linda Mooton Howell. They 
there are incredible things going on underground. Abu 77, Russia loses contact with Meteor M satellite, claims discovery of first extraterrestrial. Oh, interesting. All right, snooze and conspiracy. Nobody wants, nobody wants in these dramatic situations big floods on Earth. Christ forgiveness, testimony to the Toronto. Uh, this is a new channel I just subscribed to. If you guys want to check that out, um, Roy Potter QA. That's the name of the channel, Roy, Roy Potter QA. And he's doing a report here, Deep State Attacks Q. He's a former Navy commander. Um, so he's definitely got people's attention with that title. Into Thin Air Update Northeast Rain or Snow, Mr. BB333 and. His son, Brandon, shout out. God, family, and guns. Top five shotgun shells for self-defense. Step one, survival. Making a leather sheath. Cold steel. Kukri. Um, if you guys like, for your knives, nice leather sheaths with all of these um, attachments and things, uh, this guy, One Step Survival, does a great job. I don't know if he takes personal individual orders or if he has his own business. I don't know how he works with that or he just does it as a hobby. Uh, but contact him if you're looking for one. Uh, if I could afford it, I would. Uh, but I'm sure they're expensive. Or maybe not. If he each his own. You might have to send him your knife with it as well, too, in the mail. So uh, check that out. Voice America. Ben Shapiro. The Obama administration is a safe haven for criminals voice america a former marine says trump travel ban is what america needs right now hashtag mega uh yeah this guy he's huge it's like a truck this guy big 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 dude um he was just did a couple tours in iraq uh he said he had a conversation with them asking them um if he was to go out in the streets and mingle amongst the locals, what would happen to him? Uh, and they answered to him quickly, without hesitation, that they would they would snatch you up off the street. They would torture you. They would film it and kill you. And he, then he turns around and says to them, why would we then want you to have those same type of people in our country? If they're going to do this in their own country, it's logical to think that they would do this in someone else's, else's country. And the whole discussion was, why do we need, you know, to build a border and to stop immigration, you know, from terrorist type of countries and vetting people? He got 44 million views from that video he did. Unbelievable. So Sean Hannity found it exciting and got him on. Show him, got him quite a few more million. Uh, the Common Sense Show. Will the U.S. follow Norway or Australia when this bubble revisits? Um, yeah, there are things that are going to implode and change drastically the Constitution. We have to, you know, be prepared for that by our own government. And that's, that's definitely coming, folks, without a doubt, because we're not going to always have a Donald Trump in office. How we survived eight years of Obama, I don't know. Hillary would have been the death of us all, constitutionally speaking. We are change. Who's really taking our jobs? Subtle infantry, flat earth, and normalcy, the evolution of power, and societal deception. Convention of States Project. Uh, in the news, Convention of States, South Carolina. Crash course, Lone Star. Uh, Daniel Riley, inflation is the enemy's weapon of choice. Don't be, I don't know how you pronounce that. Sulemaeus, I don't know. Lone Star, 1776. Jackson Therapy, WSO. Meet an Earth Patriot, new theory on booms. Non-human entities. 
Planet X last update, November 28, 2017. Nibiru incoming flyby. SciShow, why can't you bring mercury thermometers on planes? Probably because they'll implode or explode, one or the other. Pressure. Cheap home sitting. Uh, nephew home sitting came to visit. Beep your earth watch. North Korea fires missile. North Korea missile. Health Ranger. Crossfire. How are all caught between warring globalist factions? Uh, Senator Al Franken, Franken on sex abuse of women. And wrapping it up, uh, right side news broadcast city president speaks on taxes, Democrats in North Korea, Paul Bagley, North Korea missiles, common sense show, what's good for the goose is not always good for the gander. Shill stopper with liberty and justice for all. Hollywood stories, WSO, UFOs, strange weather, getting weird again. William Mount, elites laugh at a world gone mad. And Team Jesus Preacher, crowd, UCF, University, it's good. Full Spectrum Survival, Tinfoil Tuesday, are chemtrails real? Cloud seeding weather modification conspiracy theory. Not conspiracy. Team Jesus Preacher, okay, USA. Hey, that's it, folks. Wrapping it up. Um, oh, don't tell me I didn't have a big... I didn't have a map the whole time? Oh, no, that's the other... I, page I just had up. Okay. Oof. Did that a couple of times. I'm talking about the news and, sh oh, no, no, you guys couldn't see it. All right. Uh, it's time, folks, for you to decide if you have not yet given your life to Jesus that you can do so now uh, with a simple prayer based upon all this facts that I just told you about, getting into heaven and this craziness going on in the world. We don't know when we're all going to die or have our last rights to be religious, um, out in public at least as well, like some countries do oppress. So it is easy and simple now enough to pray, give your life to Jesus, and to worship at a place of your choice. Uh, so I invite you to repeat this simple prayer after me if you'd like to be saved and born again and welcomed into the family of God's kingdom in heaven. Please bow your head if you can, and get on your knees if you can, close your eyes, repeat aloud or silently at least, in your mind, humbly, uh, before God, the following. Dear Heavenly Father, please forgive me of my sins. I repent and confess of my sins to you, Lord. I accept your Son, Jesus, as my Savior. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead ascended to heaven and is coming back again. I believe that your son Jesus is the true living son of God. Dear Lord, have mercy on my soul now at the hour of my death. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and wash me in the Lamb's blood. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, congratulations. If you just said that prayer, God has accepted you into his kingdom. Congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Now, to seal the deal, you have to go get baptized fully submerged in water. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go to a local church. Go to two or three if you have to. Get an appointment or get baptized right then and there. Bring a change of clothes, fully submerged in water. Tell them you got saved. Tell them you got born again at an online ministry, and you need to be baptized right away. Don't let them tell you otherwise. Oh, you got to wait. You know, you got to follow this. You got to do that. No. Find a church 24 to 48 hours to either do it right then and there or to set an appointment up. If they won't do it, say thank you. God bless you. Have a nice day. Go to the next church. Um... Make sure you're fully submerged, and make sure it's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then get yourself a Bible. Start studying the Bible. Start worshiping on Saturday, the Sabbath. 
going to a Sabbath keeping church. Um, I am an Adventist, Seventh day Adventist, and we keep the Sabbath holy by going to church on Saturday. Friday, sun Friday, sunset to Saturday, sunset is the Sabbath. We go to church on Saturday, not Sunday. You could be baptized at a church that does the Sabbath, you know, does the um, their service on Sunday. Um, as long as it's in the name of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Make sure it's fully submerged. Can't be a sprinkle or your feet wet or splashing. Fully submerged, just like Christ did. Um, and then get yourself a waterproof Bible. You can do that on our website for $99. Free shipping, ambertracks.com. That's amber like the color, tracks like railroadtracks.com. One word, ambertracks.com. Uh, start studying. Join a church. If you want to join the Adventist church, find one near you. Uh, go to their website, Adventist.org, and they'll show you a church near you. And uh, that's about it for that, for scriptures. Um, keep uh, keep focusing on Christ, and we'll see you in the kingdom. S do your own ministry. Spread the gospel somehow. Buy extra books and Bibles to give to people. You know, or church will give it to you for free. All right, uh, that wraps it up uh, for bunkers. If you're interested in building a bunker or know anyone that is, we do bunkers custom designed, five at a time, 25000 each with financing for $200 each um, from California. So if you're a land developer or you got a couple neighbors, guys get together, minimum order is five. Uh, or if you want to do a custom design, it's 50000 and up uh, to do that as well. I am not the builder, I am the consultant uh, that you would hire to find you the best company for these uh, bunkers. Um, you could also hire me for personal one-on-one -on -one training for emergency survival for your unique situation and condition, location, family, etc. Um, Long-term, short-term, bug in, bug out, car, work, school, etc. Uh, I could be hired as a consultant for this to advise upon anything from um, government and personal and businesses as well uh, and also for relocation or if you're looking considering buying a land or a house somewhere where to buy and why and why not to buy in that area when considering long-term off-grid survival all right folks thanks for joining god bless you uh, oh that website is worthingtonbunkers.com that's worthingtonbunkers.com we'll see you again god willing tomorrow thursday morning 9 a.m Eastern Time on Facebook.com forward slash Amber Tracks on the 30th of November. And then we upload it onto YouTube.com forward slash Amber Tracks. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.